This is Pastor Mark Choate, and welcome to Revival Today. This is, I believe, February the 10th, and it is 7 p.m. I have a couple special guests coming in tonight that are going to also be joining me for today's podcast. I hope that everyone, uh, please go online and just let someone know that we're on right now. You can like or share or just put in the comments. Also, what I'm going to do for those that are tuned in tonight is I put the the, the link there, but I'm going to also share out the link for tonight so that you can click on it. And so that way we can go live and we can get live guests. All right. So if you notice on my restream, I have a link there and it's available for you to click on. For those of you that want to be on tonight live. Tonight's podcast, we're talking about love and divorce in the church. Amen. Amen. So we're going to enjoy tonight. We're going to have a conversation with our special guest that should be coming in soon. But again, I'm Pastor Mark Cho, and this is Revival Today. Tonight, I want to make sure that we had some time with each and everyone that's tuning in to have real conversation, amen? So we're gonna have a conversation today talking about relationships and love in the church, amen? At this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up in prayer and then we're gonna talk and we're gonna be practical. And remember, I want you to ask questions that are real to you and maybe there's things that you're going through that you need answers about, about relationships and love and marriage and also relationships in the church. All right, I believe that relationships are important. I believe that it's important to get understanding about how to have a proper relationship, being a Christian or non-Christian, amen? Because in today's world, we have such a high divorce rate. And so we wanna talk about that tonight, all right? So before I open up, before we get started, I'm just gonna say a prayer, just thanking God for each and everyone that's tuning in and just like, share, get the word out. And remember, click on the link in the corner and you can be a special guest. Now, if you want to be a special guest, know this, you're going live. So everyone else will see you as well. So that means you might have to put your hair, (laughs) you might have to put your wig on, (laughs) you might have to get things in order. All right, because it will be live. So whoever wants to get in on this live, you're welcome to click on the host link. Once you click on that link, guess what? You're going to be part of tonight's conversation, all right? If you want to click on the private chat, we'll do that later, all right? Okay, at this time, I'm going to open up and pray. Lord, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for each and every one that's tuning in tonight. Lord, Father, I ask that you give us wisdom and direction, encouragement for those that are watching, Lord, that want to learn how to love in the church. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining me today. First of all, I'm just going to open up and just let you know that uh, my name is Pastor Mark Cho, and I'm the pastor of NEP House of Praise. We're located at uh, 351 Elm Street, Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, I'm going to talk about the subject about love and marriage in the church. And the reason why is growing up in the church, you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding about relationships or how to have the proper relationship. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to use a word as well so that we can kind of break things down and give more understanding. Now, I'm here to be practical, all right? So when I say be practical, let's talk about it. Let's be real, amen? So if you want to be on this show tonight, please click on the link and I'll bring you on live. And you can ask me whatever questions you may have. Amen. Now, just give you a little history about myself. Uh, I 
I'm I'm now 56 years old. I've been married for 32 years uh, to my lovely wife, Andrea Cho, and she's a Mills. Um, we grew up in, in the church, and I met her as a young teenager, a man in the church, all right? And we now, after 32 years of marriage, going on 33 this April, praise God. Mm, 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 mm. This April, we're going on 33 years. And if I mess that up, she might actually input that I just messed it up a year or maybe gave us an extra year. Whatever it is, it's somewhere between 32 and 33 years. We have four wonderful children. And most of all, I want to say to everyone, by the grace of God, he has kept us together all these years. So I want to talk to you about love and relationships in the church. One of the biggest things I've noticed about the church and coming up in the church, uh, the church really never, ever deals with relationships. Um, you'll see where relationships come and go, where people get married, and you ask yourself, what is the policies? How does it go? How does it work in the church? Or why is it that, that in the church uh, we're experiencing a, a high divorce rate? And you might say, uh, uh, you might say to yourself, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm in the church or not, there's still divorce. So we want to talk about that tonight. Amen. <clears throat> now there's a few, few scriptures that I'm going to pull out tonight that I'm going to start off and talk about. And then I want you to go into relationships. Uh, so whatever questions you have. First of all, if you turn me to Ephesians 5.25, it kind of gives a little information about how we're to treat our wives or how we're to love our wives. And you say to me, Pastor, why are we having this conversation today? Reason why is because, of course, everyone knows this weekend is February month and it's a month of love and everyone wants to be in love. <laughs> so everyone wants to figure out how to do this right, especially in the church. All right. So this weekend, a lot of us are going to go with our significant other we're gonna go with a husband or wife and we're gonna maybe go away or maybe get flowers we gotta do something special amen but the thing is is one of the problems with understanding about doing something special for your husband or wife we sometimes get married and we don't understand what the bible says all about relationship love maybe sexual it's your 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 your, your marital uh your sexual relationship, whatever it may be, the church doesn't talk about. So you grow up in the church and no one really knows what's going on or how to date or how to do it right even after they get married. So that's why we're going to have this conversation tonight. All right. So we're just asking you all to get online, get online, like and share, because we're talking about love and divorce in the church. All right. Just so I'm going to start off with this fact. Number one fact. Do you know that in America today, in the church, in the church, we have 51 percent divorce rate, 51 percent divorce rate. Now, if you include Catholics, it's 74 percent divorce rate. That's in the church. <coughs> now, some would say to me, Pastor, why is it that? In the church, we have such high divorce rate, even though we're saved, even though we know God, even though, you know, we do everything according to the word of God. That's where I think we're wrong. Hey, Katrina. Hey. Also, if you're in the studio, you can join me. If you're not, Katrina, you can uh, click on that link anytime and you can be part of this broadcast. And if Corey's here on site. Tell him to come on into the studio. He's going to be our special guest here live on site. Or maybe he's just going to click on the link. But I uh, uh, invited uh, Katrina here so that she can also talk with us about love and marriage in the church. Amen. <coughs> so, first of all, one of the biggest concerns about relationships, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself before I go into Scripture. And uh, if, uh, Katrina, you're coming on, you can click on that link and we can see you. I would bring you in the queue as we get ready to talk. 
All right. So those of you that are looking online, let someone know we're talking about love and divorce in the church. This is a big topic because, like I said, uh, with Catholics, along with the Christian faith, we have about 74% divorce rate among just Christians altogether, non-Catholic, 51% divorce rate in the church. People that love God, confess that the Lord is its Lord and Savior, but yet the divorce rate is still is high. So I'm going to talk about that now. Hey, I got a special guest that's here tonight. It's Corey's in the house. Amen. Amen. Hey, Corey, why don't you come over here? Okay. Uh, take a seat with us and just hang out with us tonight. Okay. Okay. Hey, look at everyone. We got Corey in the house. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Amen. Amen. Uh, Corey, I thank you for joining us tonight. I know we're we're live right now in session, and some people are actually going to be involved and getting involved with this conversation with us tonight. I do have some paperwork here, and that's something that you can help follow along. And even if you can, even help me read some of it, I appreciate that. Of course. But uh, Corey, uh, tonight we're having a real conversation about love and marriage in the in the church. Amen. So those that are online, I told them they can click on the link here, and that's down here at the bottom, right there to the bottom, right there. <laughs> you can you can click on that, and you can you can um, let me move this so it's not in our face. Uh, let me move this. Uh, 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 it's a little tricky now. Um, we can still see both of us, I guess. But we're talking about love and marriage in the church. And I was just going into the fact that in in the church um, right now, non-Catholic, it says that there's a 74 uh, percent. No, no, no. Non-Catholic, it's 51 uh, percent divorce rate. Uh, with Catholic, it's 74 percent divorce rate wow. in the church. And so I want to talk about love and marriage in the church and understand where all this divorce comes from, and even in the Word of God, where divorce verse first showed up, and how God uh, made uh, provision for man so that they that if they were to get a divorce, there was an understanding that also came along with it. The reason why we need to talk about this is because I want to see uh, people that get married. I want to see the church be successful. How many online want to see? see the church become more successful with marriage. If you want to see that happen, just just click, yes, I want to see that happen. Oh, and it says right here, uh, Katrina's in the car still, and she will be in shortly. Yeah. Hey, Amen. So, yes, we're looking forward to seeing Katrina. So we have another seat, so she can even sit right there, and we'll okay. see all, all of you. I don't know if she might be online. She's such a hop on. Okay. Okay, so if she hops on, that's good. Yeah. All right. So. So, and I was just telling the viewers that I was born and raised pretty much in the church, and 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 I met my my uh, wife in the church. I've been married now for thirty two years, um, almost thirty three years. April, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and some people look at the your relationship and say, "How did you make it?" And I want to talk about that tonight because I don't think that a lot of ministries, a lot of pastors, a lot of people talk about they don't. marriage enough in relationship. Not enough. Not okay. Enough. Yeah. And so I want to be able to have these real conversations with, with even yourself. And I'm going to move this mic over a little bit so that it also picks you up as well. Okay. okay. All right. So if, when you need to talk, you can lean into it. So all our audience, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I think it's going to be good because God wants us to get an understanding. One of the things is, is the Bible says the lack of knowledge is why we perish is because we don't know what we're doing. Right. And I believe that even in, in relationships, uh, we don't know what we're doing. We get into them, but we don't understand what the word says about relationship or how to conduct ourselves in a proper relationship. Especially if you're from a broken home, mm. you don't have an example. Exactly. So you don't, you see, like he, he just said, if you're from a broken home, you don't have an example. And that's why we have to talk about this. Now, I know when I grew up in church, uh, one of the common practices i seen happen, and those of you that can agree, you can say, it, you know, I agree online, but we seen where they didn't endorse dating in the church. 
Yeah, there was not much talk about uh, dating. There was not much talk about how to date. And if you did date and you happen to be a minister or anyone involved in ministry, you would you wouldn't see them really be engaged with the ministry. And then they come out of nowhere and they're married. Exactly. <laughs> and so you're like, what's this all about? You know, so think about it. You're a young man or woman growing up in a church and, and maybe you see a, a young sister or brother that's a, a, a young adult and, and you, you're kind of following them and they're your mentor, maybe they're a minister and, and, and they're kind of encouraging you. And then all of a sudden you don't see the minister anymore. You don't even see them anymore. Mm. And then all of a sudden, boom, we hear they're getting married. And there we go. And now once they're married, they're back engaged in everything in the church. And that's been our understanding in the church about being married is that you don't do it. You don't date. And if you do date, you're sinning. Because if you're trying to have sex, you're sinning. So we have to talk about this tonight. Okay. So, uh, Corey, we're going to we're going to go over these things and we'll have some conversation with the people. So those of you that are watching online, please be engaged. If you have a question, type it in. We'll we'll try to read it. Uh, Corey might be able to see it better than me, but we want to talk about it tonight. All right. So our first scripture starts off with Ephesians 5, 25, and we're going to go 25 through 27. Corey, can you read that for me? You got it. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, see right here, it says, husband loves your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's what it says. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. And I'm going to start with this passage first so that I can get into more practical stuff. Okay, now go ahead and read 26, Corey. That he may, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the water of the by the word the, with the washing of water by the word so it said that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the word of water by the word okay now you might say okay pastor why are we going here with scripture talking about how to love our wives or have a relationship we need to start with the word first because we want to have a foundation okay so that's why we're going here Amen. okay, okay. Uh, read the last verse 27 that he might present it to himself as a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, now, see, now it says in the beginning, it says husbands. It says husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. That was a revelation that God had to give to me to help me with my relationship. And, and I'm going to bring this out so that everyone can understand, so that when we go into more conversation, you get a clarity. When it says here, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church, where God had taken me was this, is I, anyone that knows Pastor Mark Show knows that I love God and know that I love doing ministry and ministry work. And, and what I mean by that is you don't have to beg me to be at church. It's true. You don't have to beg me to be in prayer. You Even as a young teenager growing up, I love to be in the house of God. All right. And, and, and I loved it so much that it was natural for me. OK. Now, the reason why I'm going there first, it says that it might be sanctified and cleansed with washing of water by the word. It says here that it may be sanctified. Sanctified means set apart, washed and cleansed by the word. The last part I want to bring into before I go into this good conversation we're going to have. Look, at, we have someone here on there now. Who's that, Aaron? Aaron. Yeah, man. It says, so how is this guy going to live with God? Is that what it says? Yeah, so how is this guy has gone live with God? How is this guy going live with God? Hey Amen. Let's 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 keep on going. We'll we'll keep going with you. Okay. All right. So one of the reasons why. Okay. When when I was talking about washing and living and 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 having a relationship in your marriage is when I found out that when it says love your wives as God loves the church, it made me understand that you when you have a hustle for something, 
You do it without thinking about it. Second so, nature. It's second nature. So when it says love your wife as a church, then what, what happened to me, I found out that I love God. I love being in church. I love the word of God. Not saying that I was perfect. Right. Not saying that everything's right in my life. Right. But guess what? Uh, I would do it without second thought. Passionate. Passionate about it. And so when the word says love your wife as the church, that's where the breakdown starts to happen because it says washing, but it, it says sanctify and, and, and cleanse with the washing of the word. Now, the next part I want to point out, it says that it might present itself glorious church, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Now, that's where we're going to go into today's subject. Not having spot or wrinkle. That's what the word says. It says not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. The reason why a lot of marriages and relationships in the church aren't working is because we are going into relationships without the structure which the word says to go into it with. So we're bringing a lot of blemish into the relationship. A lot of stuff into the relationship because we just didn't know how to walk up right. right. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So when you look at the scripture it says without a spa or without a wrinkle, think about it. It's like a relationship. When you go into a relationship and you wasn't straight up or honest, then you got blemish. Then you have wrinkles. Then you have spots. And so when it says love the husband, love your wife as a church, God wants us to learn how to clean up before we go into it. Amen. And see, yeah. this is where we are messing up. The first phase of it is that now how can I learn to clean up if I never see no one in the church date? Never seen anybody talk about it or give an understanding. Is that what you feel sometimes? Yeah. Go ahead and trial speak. by error. If you don't have the example. And unfortunately, you make a lot of unnecessary mistakes. Mm. See how Corey, Brother Corey said, if you don't have an example, you 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 have a lot of unnecessary mistakes. So that's the number one problem with us as a church and as pastors and as ministers. We come in trying to be a perfect thing and try to present a perfect way and not be real. And so not being real means that you, 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 you're showing people a relationship that they can't relate to. Correct, an image. Yes, an image. And then when you when you marry an image, guess what? It never is what you thought it was. Exactly. And so this is where the, it all starts. This is where the problem with relationships start, is that we have an image of one another, even in the church. So here's an image in the church. The image in the church works like this. If you want to date, you can't date. So you young people, you don't need to date. What you need to do is stop going to the movies. You need to be a prayer at night. That's what you need to be doing. Now, that's how they acted with us. Mm -hmm. They would talk to us like, you don't have no business being at the movies. And, and it's late. You don't need to be out at, at night. Right. How can we teach the young people how to walk or develop a relationship if they never seen us demonstrate it. Then even in the spiritual where we want people to be sanctified or know Christ, but what's happening is we're following those that won't even try to demonstrate because everyone wants to get behind a movement. They want to get behind a fantasy. So even with the church, we're getting behind a fantasy when we get married. So when he said in the scripture, number one, it says, love your wife as Christ loved the church. So what I, my number one advice for the brothers today is this. When it says, love your wife as Christ loves the church, that means you have to love her in a way where you have a compassion, where you're driven after it. Absolutely. You're okay with being vulnerable. Well, almost, it almost seems to the extent where you're willing to die. Uh oh, you see that? That's what it says. Uh -oh. Or, 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 or it says when it says without wrinkle or spots. Now wrinkle or spots. That part to me is that part where it says uh, 
when you have faults in your life. Now you say, how can I be in a relationship and not have faults? That's not what it says. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. So how can you have faults and stuff? Is When you have a wrinkle, what do you do? Iron it out. Uh-uh. Correct. So when you don't see people practice relationships in the church, you don't learn how to iron things out in the church. Correct. So you take on the world and you do it like the world. Yeah, plus they have all the TV shows and stuff that the kids are watching. Okay, it's kind of go, go into that for me. Tell me a little bit on that end when you say the TV shows and stuff. Well, in the TV shows, it just shows that when people meet, they end up getting together that mm -hmm. same day. And it's just giving the wrong example of how relationships really work. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, Brother Corey was saying that, like on the TV shows, it shows people when they meet someone, they just get together and they might be sexually active, boom, right away. Same day. Same day. Now, see what it, what that is. Now, that's there's the blemish. There's the wrinkle. Now, all of a sudden, see the reason why we have to understand this is that when it says like Christ loved the church, what we have to understand is what we do prior to something is what we are, are now. So if we if we do this prior to the relationship, we're bringing that spirit into the relationship. Correct. Yeah. Door. Okay. He's going to get his his wife katrina because she's also going to join us tonight how many are picking up on this conversation so when it says to love your wife as christ loved the church now this is why we have to understand the word of god because it's hard to love your wife or husband the way god loved us but he wants us to get there so how do we get there it was first of all we have to have that passion that means we got a we got a, we got a desire to please one another, and that's where I'm going to go with this teaching tonight because the spirit of divorce has found its way in the church so much so that divorce is now the norm. And when I say the norm, divorce is now the the only thing that's expected, even in the church. People don't expect you to work it out or to 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 work through it instead they think that uh the only way you can get through it is to separate and so that's why we have to love our wives as christ loved the church amen the bible says here in the word of god that he hates divorce now love in divorce in the church let's let's go into that subject or that conversation about love Hey, man, we got special guests. We have Corey's wife, Katrina. Katrina's in the house. Hey, hey. We got some more guests. Come on in here and just jump in here. We're just going to slide in. Yeah, and I think you can see her. Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah. Welcome in the Thanks house. Thanks for the invite. You're welcome. Sorry, thank it's a little you. late, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, well, first of all, we thank you for being part. And, and this is a lovely couple. This is Corey and Katrina. They're actually newlyweds. So they've been married now, and they're, they're doing it, and they grew, They got married in the church, and they, they both love the Lord. And But yet, you know, uh, the subject is love and divorce in the church. Mm. And, and I mentioned earlier that the divorce rate uh, among uh, the church members, 51%, and with Catholics, it's up to 74%. Uh -huh. So that tells you that you have a right, a higher rate of failure in every scenario, yeah. world, church, whatever. Everywhere, yeah. So in, so one of the things we were talking about, we went into Scripture, Ephesians 5, 23 uh, through, through 27, where it was saying, love your wife as a church. And, and we were dis discussing that. Yeah. And we, we were we were kind of coming from this perspective where when it says love your wife as a church as as Christ gave himself for it, mm -hmm. uh, that shows a full sacrifice and commitment that Christ made to the church. Yeah. And so when I was sharing with uh, Brother Corey, your husband, I was saying that when we read the scripture, we don't understand how to interpret it. Yeah. And so what, what, what I'm trying to get the people that are watching online to understand is that 
when it says a wife as a church. Have you ever been uh, involved in something that you had a passion to do that you just loved it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do, do tell me, what, what do you, what's well, one of like what we do for our business with the life insurance? Like that really is a passion for me because we have the opportunity to get out there, meet the community, and really help them with things that they need. See, so, so because it's a passion, yeah. Do you do it without really any? It's a love. Yeah, it's a yeah. Nobody has to like wake me up to do it. Nobody has to tell me what I need to do. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. See, so when it says love your wife as Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why the next scripture says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with what the washing, with the washing of water by the word. Mm -hmm. So what, first of all, that process says it will sanctify and cleanse. Yep. So he sanctifies and cleanses with the washing of the word. But the next part I brought out, and this is where I'm going with this, and then we'll go to the next part. It says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Now, when you say spot or wrinkle, think of relationships. When you get into relationships, what happens, we got a lot of spots and wrinkles in them yeah. because we didn't do the work prior. Yeah. So we go into a relationship with all kind of wrinkles. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we got all kind of spots, and we are not without blemish. So now we bring all this mess into our relationship. Yeah. And I was talking to uh, Brother Corey and those that are online. I was talking about how in the church, we grow up and we see people that are saved or saints and we never see them date. They yeah. just come back married. Yeah. And, Sometimes and, more than once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, so you don't see them married. So now people that grow up in the church don't learn how to date, right? Mm -hmm. So they sneak off and start dating. And yeah. then Corey had mentioned, and then you get all of your information from the world. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah. And now all of a sudden we do get married and we don't have a real understanding of how to please one another because we only learn everything from the world. Yeah. And the world says, get it now. Yeah. Wait for nothing. Yeah. And so when you when you have that kind of teaching where you think that everything is right away, then you don't understand the seed and the harvest principle. Mm -hmm. See, even if you uh if if you choosing to have a child and you go through the process of having a child, the way it works is you still got to wait nine months. Yep. Yep. So why is it that we get into a relationship and we say, Lord, we want this, and we both know the Lord, and we all love God. Say, I love God. I love God. I love my man. <laughs> <laughs> Type that online. I love God. I love my wife. I love my girlfriend. We all in love. <laughs> But for some reason, the ones we love so much, we can't seem to stay with more than a couple months. Yeah. Or we can't seem to endure the relationship, the pain that comes with knowing one another. Mm -hmm. It's because we don't understand that to have the love of Christ means that you have to go in it with an understanding that you're looking beyond all faults yeah. and only ministering to one another's needs. Now, this is why the church is messing up so badly, because we get all our information from porn, from online, from, from movies, from Cinderella and Disney. Yeah. And none of that is real. No. So you're going in with like this false pretense of what marriage is. Yeah. yeah. So now what's happening, I hope you're enjoying this. Go on, type. I want to hear more. I want to hear more, Pastor. Give me more. I know you can't type, Pastor, so I'm not going to even try to type. You want more. You want more. So, so, but what happens is w w w w the church says, don't talk about it. And the world says, talk about it all the time. Yeah. So now where you're supposed to get a word or where you're supposed to get an understanding or where you're supposed to get your learning from, it's supposed to be in the house of God, but the house of God is not teaching. And like even the word, it says, be fruitful and multiply. What did that mean? That meant you got to be sexual with your husband and wife. That's real. God ordained that. But we made that sound as if it cannot be. It's not right. You don't talk about it. You just happen to show up with five kids. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Don't talk about how it happened. Yeah, yes. exactly. This baby. You just poof, poof. <laughs> That's like, how many more are you going to have? Wow, you it's must have been on the trip. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's 
so we, we're not learning the principles of the kingdom. So we go into everything to get. And that's why we're going to go to the next verse. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know is when I said love and divorce in the church. What did the scripture say in Malachi 2, 16? It talks about how it's pretty shrewd where, where it says that Jesus, or in the word, it talks about how God hates divorce. Now, I know that's tough in today's church because almost every one of us has gone through divorce. And that's why the Bible says, love God, uh, all have sinned and come short. So this lesson is not about condemning. This lesson is trying to show us that, okay, God allowed his permissive will to take place. That means God said, okay, I'm not in agreement, but I'm going to let it go. But I want you to learn from this. Yeah. You see? See, so God said it's okay to go forward, but I want you to learn from it so you don't continue to do it over and over again. So let's read that Malachi. And it's it's kind of just a statement, but read the whole thing. Corey, if you yeah, can. Malachi 2.16, we read, I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel in our society where the divorce rate is particularly high, this wording jars us. We have become so used to divorce that the prophet's condemnation of it seems overly strong. Yet this is God's word. He hates divorce. See, so, <laughs> you see how that, yeah. you see? So, now, when you say the word God hates, what it is is that it's not that uh, God dislikes the people. Mm -hmm. He hates the act. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wants the people and all of us to understand that when you go into marriage or relationships, it's all about the vows. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh oh, And so that means God said, don't make a vow and don't keep it. Now, a lot of people say, I don't want to go through hell with this person. This, but that's the person you said was your lover. Yeah. That's why when the scripture says love your wife as a church, God is saying you got to line things in perspective and put priority on it and say, this means something to me. So that means I'm going to work out the blemish. Right. I'm going to work out the wrinkles. Right. I'm going to put in the work so that it gets the success it deserves. Yeah. Do you believe that your relation deserves success? Absolutely. See, see. Uh, because for one, like I feel like people don't take the vow seriously. Mm -hmm. The marriage is the only place where we actually have to make a promise to God. Uh oh, when we have children, we don't have to make a promise mm -hmm. to God. When we do all these other things, when we switch, we don't make vows to God. <coughs> but marriage uh -oh. requires an actual vow. Uh oh, so, so you it, go people ahead. People just throw it away. They just don't take the away. actual vow seriously. But we should ask, why do we have to make a vow for mm -hmm. this and nothing else? Mm -hmm. and, and, and she said, she just said, Katrina just said that. That wasn't me. <laughs> She just said that, that was Katrina. She said, Wow. Now, see, the thing is, though, that's why I like what she just said because you know, a woman will bring that out in a minute and tell you, You done made a vow, you done told me what you're gonna bring home. You said you were bringing her bread home by eight tonight. My wife used to get on me, I go out and she said, Where was you? You were supposed to bring that bread back home an hour ago. I'd be at my mother and father's house hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, it did get, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife's probably on there now saying, yep, he sure did. He went out for a long, long. She waited on bread. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. See, so, see, so back to what you, you had mentioned is that word bow. Mm -hmm. The Today's time is our word is not, it, it, it's, it means nothing. Yeah. And so why God hates it is because that's your word. Like when you ever say, well, whose name do you swear in? Swear in, in his Jesus name. Swear on his name that you see when you make a vow to God, you're making your promise to God that you're going to love or cherish or keep that person or protect them or cover them. I mean, then when you make that kind of vow that I'm going to love, protect, keep, cover, nothing in that says that that vow was made because you were the most beautiful. None of that said because you were going to always be healthy. That vow was just saying that my commitment is going to be to that individual because I made it before God and man as witnesses. Yeah. So when we make a vow, we make it before God and man as our witnesses. Okay. And so now where the church messes up is that we want to be Holy Ghost filled about everything. 
but we don't love our family members, our wives, our husbands like the church. Mm. And so this is where we got to swap it on both sides. Everyone hear that? This is where a lot of times women say, oh, yeah, husband, you got to love me like the church. <laughs> but and you got to also love your husband like the church. Mm. You got to both go there with it. I will tell you that that's something that him and I struggle with because it does say husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, but he says wives are supposed to respect the husband. Mm -hmm. So are we supposed to be the lovers or are we supposed to give respect once we have the love? Okay, now this, I like that. Are we supposed to give respect once we have the love you're saying? Yeah, because it's like the love came first. God mm -hmm. said husbands love your wives as Christ loved mm -hmm. the church, and then we were to respect him. Mm. So it's like the love, I feel like, is supposed to come first before you get the respect. Okay, I like that. The love is supposed to come before you get the respect. No, the difference is, is this is where we mess up. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that when two come together, they become what? One. One. Uh oh. Mm. <laughs> I guess that just answered yes. it. <laughs> so when you both, like, I like what Katrina just said, well, you know, if I get that respect, that's when I get love. If your toe hurts, you're going to take care of it regardless because it's part of you. Yeah. Now, when see, see, the thing is, is we're doing a tit for tat. We want something to give something. Yeah. But when you're already part of one, the Bible says the two becomes the one. So that means that I can't choose to respect my, my foot that's hurting. I got to tend to it or it affects the whole body. Yeah. So guess what? When you come become one, your whole existence relies on one another. So nothing will operate properly anymore when you said i do to one another because now you're one yeah. that means now you're one in your thinking one in your ways one in your whole development process in this life meaning this is that we have gone through and those of you that are online that that may be gone through this as well is that you get married and then all of a sudden all of your personal goals and ambitions uh you start to kick in and say oh but but he's holding me back from from meeting all my dreams. The problem is, is that if you're one, then you got to go about it together. I think that's probably where the disconnect is, is mm -hmm. that we weren't taught what being one means. There you go. <laughs> see, see, now she just said that's where it showed up. The Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Uh-oh. That means if, if when the Bible says don't be unequally yoked, everyone thought that was bad. The church is pushing. Don't marry them. Don't marry someone that's not safe. I need you to know that you can't go in the same direction in any form or any way if you're not in one accord. Yeah. Got to have the same vision. Yeah, same vision. Yeah. And so this is why back in the day where, where the women messed up was, they said uh, they bought into... Well, oh, I don't need no man. Boom, boom, boom. Where the men messed up, the men started to become more feminine. Or how you say that? Feminine. Feminine. Yeah. Uh, y'all need to y'all need to pray for me. Y'all need to pray for me. And, and, and what happened was the men stepped back and the women went forward, and now there's no balance. Mm -hmm. And so what's what has happened is is no one is looking out for the other. Instead, we're in it for our own gain. Yeah. And we're not going in, we're not addressing it as if if you win, I win. If she wins, I win. You gotta be one in yeah. one accord. So the 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 equally yoke is a part where the church has messed up is because uh the, the, the kids don't date in a church. Think about it. Most of us snuck out of church to go date somebody. Yep. And you refused to do it because you you got this odd feeling when you sat in church with the boyfriend or girlfriend. Yep. So now you didn't have any biblical or any, any guidance. All your guidance came from the world. All your guidance came from the lust of the flesh. All your guidance came from everyone else's perspective outside the word now you come back to god with a vow that you haven't even been in the word about yeah now think about that why is it that we all come back to god when we get married or when we're dead we got a funeral we want the priest we get married we want the priest outside of that we don't want them. yeah so 
we, we only want God or the church for two occasions. Mm. And then everything in the middle, we just give them whatever. Yeah. And this is why our marriages are struggling. Because one of the things is, is that God has to be the center of in the foundation of whatever we build on. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and to go into the conversation about divorce, it's a hard conversation. Uh, but the thing is, is the thing we have to do as a church and as people and those that are watching online, God is always forgiven. I preached on his mercies endures forever. And the mercy meant he had compassion. Mm -hmm. So that means we need to have compassion for one another. Yeah. See, that's where it shows up. His mercy endures forever. He constantly has compassion. But the saints, we don't have compassion for those we love. We can't even say the word lover in church. That's my lover. That's the one I love. That's the one I adore. We need to go to a place like that now. Yeah. Because we got to teach how to love in real terms mm -hmm. so that the young people can see and understand that love is real and that it's accepted mm -hmm. in the body. Yeah. Any question before? Um, no, I really like that because... I feel like that's what you're, like exactly what you're saying. That's the miss is that we're not shown how to love as a Christian. Yeah. So then we go out into the world and then they tell us that it's all physical. Yes. They, uh, they have to be look like this mm -hmm. and have this kind of money and all mm -hmm. that. So then now you're married and you're, you're looking at it with a worldly mindset mm -hmm. of what am I getting yes. it's about me? All the but time. Then when you go back to the world, <laughs> there's nothing selfish about Nothing. marriage in the word. Nothing. He never talks about what you should be getting with the husband. Like, it's no, always, always one. one. So that's where the disconnect is. And yep. I just love that you're even having this conversation because it really is important. Because, I mean, we're in our 40s and we're still <laughs> figuring it out. So it's like, it, it, this conversation <coughs> needs to be had. So I like how you said that you're in your 40s and you're trying to figure it out. I want you to know you can be 70, 80, still... The, the, the thing is, is that life is a journey, and, and, and in this flesh, there's there's no perfection. Yeah. That's why it says, be therefore as perfect, even as my Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Those of you that will hear me quote that scripture, he's not saying perfect with how you do things, but perfect heart and desire, so that you always desire to please him. If you make your bottom line about pleasing God, you will please your spouse. Mm. But when you make your bottom line about pleasing yourself, then you then it's all about the pride of life, yeah. the lust of your eyes, the lust of the, the flesh, yeah. the pride of life. Yeah. Yeah. And so now God can't be glorified in it. And so now that's where the vision comes because now you're in it to win it. Mm -hmm. And when I say you're in it to win it, you're not in it to win it for each other. Now you're like, I'm getting all mine. Even when you hang out with your boys, yeah, man, she's mine. I got her, she's mine. That's all you say. It's never like, oh, oh, I'm committed to her. I just love her. It's all she, mine, 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 mine. And no, nothing came out of your mouth that says give. Yeah. And so we have to go in it with always constant giving. Now, that's hard because I've been married now 32 years, going on 33. Honey, am I right? <laughs> am I right? See, I know I got that right. <laughs> Y'all can't say I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And this April the 21st is my anniversary, so we might go away. All right. <laughs> got that out. That's a shout out. <laughs> That's a shout out. We got about 15 more minutes. I got, I got two things go ahead. to say. Sorry to go ahead. You. One of the interesting things is when it comes to getting education, when you need to get a license, you have to get education. You got to pass a certain test. But when it comes to marriage, you just need to get the license without any type of counseling or any type of tools on how to do it. That's kind of strange. Well, <laughs> that's that's a good point right there. When it comes to marriage, we don't get no counseling. We don't get nothing. Well, that's one of the problems because uh, the, the Bible says that with the, like your pastor, their job is to watch for your soul. Uh, the, the brother just says that you got to get a license for everything you do. But when you get married, you don't, you don't, there's not, there's nothing that makes you become accountable through getting a license or some kind of certification. And, and that is so true. 
And that's why when the Bible holds us accountable to our, our ministry, our pastor, our, the, those that God has said to watch for your soul, what, where that helps is, is that someone else will put eyes on it. And that's where we're messing up because nobody wants anyone in their business. Did I mention this Sunday? Yeah. How it talked about, you know, when we pray, you got to first you be able to uh, share yep. your faults with one another. Yep. And then all of a sudden, God said, I'm the firm prayers of the righteous. But we don't want to deal with each other. Yeah, we don't want people to know what our business is. So we're <laughs> and, hiding everything. And think about this. We're hiding everything, but divorce is one of the most uh, revealing things. Mm. You ain't hiding so, nothing. You ain't hiding nothing. Yeah. So every time you go through that process, you ain't hiding nothing. No. So all of a sudden, all that's revealed, and most of the time, too, is revealed in court. So yeah. now all of a sudden, it's just a big mess. Right. And that's the con of the devil. So when you go through divorce, you're not hiding nothing, church. So it's better to reveal and give and allow God to give you sound counsel. Go to those that can be encouragement to you than constantly going to the world that doesn't have the answer. Even with good therapists and all that, excuse me, with good therapists and all those that say they know what they're doing, it's when you just read something or study something, it doesn't mean that's who you are. That's why for pastors, even with pastors marrying over and over and over again, the Bible says who's going to be the first partaker. Mm. And that's why in Noah's day, everyone wasn't worthy. And that's why God cursed the whole creation because only Noah was worthy. So he was the one that went and built the ark. And God said, get in it and yeah. save him and his family because it says he couldn't find none worthy. So even with Noah, there was none worthy because no one wants to be the one. And that's where I'm going with today's lesson. It's about love and divorce. And this is the Valentine's month. And everyone's trying to figure out how to how to get that Valentine gift. Mm. And then usually the day after the gift, we're probably fighting anyway. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you get that gift, you finally got that diamond earring. <laughs> finally got that diamond earring. And she still slammed the door in your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do all this stuff to get what we want, and we don't know how to appreciate it when yeah. we get it. Yeah, so true. And that's the message to everyone today is that we do all this stuff to get what we want. We want the wife. We want the husband. We want the love, but we don't know how to extend love outside of our own feelings. Mm -hmm. So where God wants us to take this thing, church, and 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 and, and get the understanding is that uh, uh, divorce is not the answer. Uh, divorce, okay, say you go through divorce, you've been through that process. What Jesus' teaching was strong about giving us to understand that he forgives faults. But he says, now if you take on a wife or you take on a responsibility, stop what you used to do and do it different. Yeah. Because it has to stop somewhere. Yeah. And so my thing to the church is this, is that divorce has to stop somewhere. You have to make it with you for your next generation, for your children's children, for your success. Your success is in one another. We don't understand that. The worst business deal is marriage. Because the more, you know, I don't care how rich you are, every time you divorce, you take a loss. So... I want to encourage the church and those that are watching tonight is that this is Valentine um, month and, and, and you know, the church don't really get into that. And like, you know, you, you supposed to be saying, you supposed to be about, talking about Valentine. Well, I'm going to make it clear. I be talking about Valentine. Um, the reason why you got to talk about love is because God is love. Yes. God is about relationship. And I want to let the church know and those that growing up in the church and never seen your pastor talk about love. It's time to do that. And it's time to show how to be a living example. And the best way we can do that, and we, we are going to set up a seminar and we're going to set up a hotel and have, have time where couples stay in the hotel. And we're going to have uh, counselors and we're going to have 
conversations about love and marriage. And most of all, we're going to talk about how to have a strong relationship, Christian or non-Christian. The reason why is because marriage was was first from the word of God. Man and woman were one. And it was always that. And so I want to encourage everyone that's checking this out. Do you guys have any more one more question before we get ready to wrap it up, because I only have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been really good. I think, um, for one, I like. I think we should continue the conversation. Um, and then, secondly, I just I feel like when we were younger, we didn't see our parents, our people in our church, go through anything. So I never saw the fights and the overcoming. Mm -hmm. I just saw the breakup. Mm -hmm. So you looked at this couple like, oh, I thought you guys had it together. And you guys were this perfect couple that I idolized. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, they're breaking up. And then you hear all the bad exactly. stuff. Exactly. So I think that's like, like you were saying, like we're hiding it, but we're not hiding it. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is we're kind of like fearful of the world seeing it. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like trying to duck behind it. Yep. But because we're hiding it, we don't have any assistance to help us. Yes. We don't have anybody to say, no, you're actually wrong. Yes. Like, no, you need to step mm -hmm. back. Man, like what we always get is um, the question our counselor asks us is where's God? Mm -hmm. When you guys were in this conversation, where was God? Mm -hmm. Who stopped to pray? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's those type of things that yeah. we don't, when you're in the, you don't think about those. And if the church isn't teaching us those yes. things, then where do we get it from? Yeah. When we're like this. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, in the church, how it's taboo and they don't really talk about it. Yeah. In the world, your friends are, whoever is quick to tell you all the details, yeah. which mm -hmm. is not the right way we want to learn about it. Yes. Right? Because the church is kind of scared and you have to kind of tiptoe around it. I, I like how we said that in the world, they'll have conversations about it all the time. How many of you see all the uh, reality shows mm -hmm. about you know, the housewives or wherever, you mm -hmm. know, but you know, if you notice, if you pay attention to all the shows as we get ready to wrap it up, I don't care how successful or how financially well off these couples are on all these reality shows, you're going to notice one constant. You're going to realize that in every scenario, all of them end up in divorces almost. Yeah. If their money couldn't keep them, their beauty, their, 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 their uh, intellect, yes, yes. their success, none of that could keep them together. And so you say, why is it that it, it on all these reality shows, if you look at each one, you'll see multiple divorces, even though they started off the show with someone. Oh, yeah, so true. It shows you that, uh, that unless you surrender this flesh to the will of God, unless you understand that the policies that are set the policies, now when I say the policies, first of all, in order to uh, understand what God requires of us, you have to know the word for yourself and know God for yourself. And that means that if you learn how to love someone first before yourself, just like Jesus has done, where he said, I, where God said that I gave my only for the whole world. So he said, I gave my only begotten son that whomever believeth them shall not perish but have a blessing life. I'm encouraging every couple that are watching this today is to give your only up for one another. And when you do that, it's no longer a selfish act. So that only is when you're super mad, you give that up. You give that only, that, that up, and you iron out that wrinkle. Because that only thing, that one thing is what will break you up. Yeah. So give that only mm. up. And so when you do that, when you sacrifice whatever it is, guess what? There won't have to be the stand, that high level of divorce in the church or in the world. Mm. Somebody has to choose to be an example in the world today. And one of the things I'm going to sign off with is saying this. On Revival today, one of the strat one of the things that God has put in my spirit was there's a church has to learn how to have conversations that will break yokes, that will change lives, and that will mend relationships. And the number one thing is we want to see our families live and not die. We want us, we want our kids to know how to stand and, and, and be together and love and grow throughout life. And guess what? You two. I want you to know this. You guys look great together. Uh, I'm so excited for you when y'all 
Uh, how long you, uh, you've been you know, married now? Eight months. Yeah. Eight months. Let's everyone give him a shout. Eight months. Eight months. Catch it up. Catch it up. <laughs> and then they're newlyweds in the church. And the thing is, so is we all must learn to encourage one another. So continue to encourage one another. This young couple, when you see them, even in the sanctuary, encourage them. And continue for you both understand your ministry starts at home. And that's why I said love the church mm-hmm. as your wife. And so with my wife, I remember I'm ending on this. I remember one day just recently I was praying, I was praying. And that scripture came and said, love your wife as a church. And I know how much I love being in the house of God. And I know how much I love to just be around the things of God. It's done without second thought. Mm-hmm. So that's the way we have to be for our love for one another, husband and wife love each other as Christ love the church. So that's what we're going to sign off on. Listen, we'll see you next week on Revival today. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, I put a link up there. If you ever want to be on live, you just uh, let us know and you can also be part of this broadcast. Again, have a good day. Sunday morning services are at 10 a.m. at 351 Chestnut Street, Manchester, New Hampshire. God is doing some great things in the neighborhood. Yes. Amen. Come hang out with us at NEP House of Praise. Thank you for checking us out. You want to sign up? You want to say bye? <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let someone else know that we're doing this every Thursday. All right. We'll see you later. Bye.